time for Dave 101. All right. Earlier this week, a Canadian writer, Daniel Otis, from Vice Magazine, wrote a fantastic article on UFOs in Canada. His main focus was of a civilian investigator named Chris Rutkowski. Now, many in the UFO field may know who Chris Rutkowski is. He's been around forever. He has been providing statistics over the years, very, very detailed and oriented about Canadian UFO sightings annually. But is there a little bit of controversy surrounding the work of Mr. Rutkowski? No, not from him, but from how he is getting his information. As Daniel Otis put out, Chris Rutkowski, and I'm going to quote from the article here, One of the country's most prominent ufologists has been covering Canadian cases for more than 30 years, but has never fully disclosed the ties. What are those ties? Well, it's come out that Mr. Rakowski has been getting reports over the last few decades straight from the Canadian Department of National Defense. So what is the issue with this? Well, let me tell you. A number of Canadian UFO researchers have tried their darndest through FOIA requests and other types of information in trying to get UFOs and the UFO studies out of the Canadian military and the Canadian government, only to be cast aside stating that the information wasn't there, it wasn't being collected, We don't know what you're asking for. Could you be more specific, please? Some were not even returned. And it led to a lot of frustration because for some reason, this topic remains very taboo in Canada's capital of Ottawa. Why? We don't know. Is it the tie to NORAD that Canada has? Is it tied to the group of five countries that Canada shares UFO information with, including the United States and Great Britain? We do not know. Does Canada have a UFO desk, much like ATIP? We don't know. We don't think so, but we don't know. The late Paul Hellyer once told me on an email, he believes there is a desk somewhere in Ottawa that includes NAV Canada, government officials, and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. But the interesting part about Chris Rutkowski is, this is a man who does not like talking publicly about UFOs. This is self-admitted in the article on his part. He doesn't like doing interviews, even though he will do them every now and again. He doesn't like being quoted, even though he will do it for certain articles. He doesn't want to be a part of the UFO scene even though he is getting his information directly from the Department of National Defense. So how does this happen? I have a source in Ottawa who I talked to today regarding this. And this person who has some credibility within government stated that he felt it was a very strong concern that Mr. Rakowski was the only one getting information. You see, this person himself has put in FOIA requests that have been denied by the federal government or the Department of National Defense or other jurisdictions that may have an interest in this subject. How can someone in Ottawa who works in the government for the government be denied, and yet Chris Rutkowski is able to get these reports. Now, some things I learned about this. Number one, Chris Rakowski does not have a security clearance or has not been given one by the Department of National Defense regarding this subject. Number two, highly classified information regarding UFOs and interaction, potentially with extraterrestrials, has not been given to him either. He has been given everything else 
all the low level reports that are still being denied to other researchers and even members of parliament themselves. So what makes Chris Rutkowski so special about this? Sure, he's a credible researcher. Sure, he probably has never asked for much in return. But he is a citizen, just like I am, just like many who are listening in our chat rooms and around the world on this. We are citizens. What makes this citizen so special that the Department of National Defense has chosen him to give the information to and no one else? Is it because he works for the University of Manitoba? Is it because when he retires or passes away, he plans on donating all of his files to the university? We don't know. This is something that is systemic in Canada right now. And with all the political upheaval coming off an election, UFOs, which were not talked about during the election run, are way, way, way down the back burner. Look, it is dangerous when you ask for something and you don't get it, yet you know somebody else has it. Reporter Daniel Otis feels this has happened to him in this case, where he has asked for certain information only to get it from Chris Rutkowski and not the main source of the Department of National Defense. Now, for Rutkowski's part, he doesn't see anything wrong with this. Well, and why should he? He's the one getting the information. He's the one who's being handed all of these reports. And by those reports, we know that some of them are even military reports. How does he get it? We don't know. Now, I may sound like I'm repeating myself on this, but this is a major, major issue that not only has to be brought up in the media in Canada, thanks to Daniel Otis, but it also has to be brought up in Ottawa as to why other people in the country are being denied access to some of these reports. Back to Daniel's article. called. There's a section called Handshake Agreement. Often billed as the country's foremost UFO expert, Rakowski is the author of 10 books on the subject and the founder of the Canadian UFO Survey, which has documented more than 22,000 sightings since 1989. While the science writer has mentioned receiving reports from the military in his survey and speaking engagements, he's never gone in-depth about the exclusive two-decade arrangement. Rakowski is quoted in the article as saying, I tend not to talk about my UFO research publicly, but I do talk about UFOs publicly. It's a subtle distinction. It's interesting that he even admits that he was surprised that he received a call from the military asking, hey, do you want these reports? They handed it to them. Think about that. The military handed UFO reports to an average citizen. Rakowski goes on to say, I don't recall the name of the person who initially phoned me more than 20 years ago. All that was discussed on a brief phone call was verification that I was the person that had wanted to receive UFO reports. Now, a spokesperson for the Canada's Department of National Defense in this article that Daniel wrote, described it as a handshake agreement with a known responsible and published researcher of UFOs. That's been passed to Rakowski. Rakowski says, I have no illusions that I receive all official UFO reports. I receive relatively low classified reports with no security concerns. He goes, I didn't start out wanting to be Canada's UFO expert. I just plugged away trying to understand what was really going on. Now, Rakowski's a smart man. He holds a degree in science and education from the University of Manitoba. Still works for the university in a communications role. 
But why can other Canadians not get their hands on these reports? What makes him so special? Look, I'm not trying to take down Rutkowski as a person or as a researcher. He has done great detailed work. He's been on this show a couple of times. But it should be grating all Canadians and other researchers who've been denied access to those same reports, including the writer of this, of this article, Daniel Otis, Grant Cameron, Ryan Stacey, Victor Vigiani, to name a few. The military says the decision to provide Mr. Rakowski with these reports was an informal process and was done as a courtesy to encourage Mr. Rakowski in his research for his fiction novels, a spokesperson said. Why would you give real reports for fiction novels? There seems to be something missing here. Are you catching what I'm saying? There is something major missing here. And once again, this isn't a slight at Mr. Rutkowski. This is a slight at the process that others are being denied these reports. What is so special about them? Why can't I have them? Why can't Daniel Otis have them? Why not put out a press release for anybody in Canada, or the world for that matter, that could have them? Look, there is a lot of UFO secrets in this Canadian world. We know they don't talk about it. And the Canadian government is famous, doesn't matter which party is in, is famous for if we don't talk about it, it doesn't exist. And as relaxed as most Canadians are, they go for it. They fall for it. It's okay with them. We also know that the RCMP are very involved in UFO reports that they end up turning over to NORAD, which means that every Canadian who files a UFO report with the RCMP will have their information turned over to both the Canadian and American military. We know that Canada's former ambassador, David McNaughton, met with Lou Elizondo's successor at the Pentagon to discuss UFOs in 2019, sometime between August and December. We know that he flew back to Ottawa in order to debrief both the defense minister, Harjeet Sajjan, and likely Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. There are people in the know about this subject. This subject has come forward. But in Canada's don't ask, don't tell policy, we can't believe a thing that is coming out of the Canadian government regarding this. And it does provide more questions and answers. So I do challenge, I do challenge members of other parties in Canada, whether it's the Conservatives, whether it's the NDP, or anybody else in the House of Commons, to ask some questions regarding this. Now, granted, since there was just an election, they are going to have to make sure who the new department of or the minister in charge of the Department of National Defense will be. But as soon as that is done, these questions have to be asked. Why does Chris Rakowski get the reports and other people, same type of citizen or government officials, are being denied the reports? Something is fishing here, and we got to get to the bottom of it. Because apparently this shows that Canada knows, and the Defense Department also doesn't care that it's handing reports to a citizen. That is your Dave 101.